Well, uh, well uh, good evening, everyone. So, as you all know, it's a challenge to introduce me. Well, you know, as everyone says, everything starts either by a word or an action. Well, this also started, uh, not a word, well, let's say a paragraph, thanks to a colleague. Uh, it started all two years ago during summer. It was summertime. You know, everyone during the summer vacation, they're trying to enjoy their time. But then we have our colleague who's really interested in school, Hamid Wali. He comes, he texts me. He's like, hey, listen, there's a robotics competition coming up. Would you like to join? I was thinking about it. I'm like, uh, Wali, it's summer, and I'm trying to have fun. Please. He's like, uh, come on, it's going to be fun. And we had a conversation. As soon as I heard one phrase, there's going to be extra marks. I'm like, Wali, come me in. I'm in. <laughs> Just for extra marks, I'm in. I'm in. So we joined. Oh, we didn't know what's going on. We didn't know anything. It came back up. They came, they delivered the box to us. I'm like, what's this? We came, we're like, let's open it. We opened it, all we saw were like weird things. We're like, what is exactly going on? What did we participate in? We come to open everything. We see we don't understand what is going on. Absolutely nothing. We get out screws, screwdrivers, pieces of metal. Okay, fine, let's look for the money. Empty the box, turn left and right. No money. Okay. Let's go online. Nothing. Then suddenly we decided to use the greatest invention, as they say, our brains. We came up with our brains, and we decided to use our brains in order to work. We started working and functioning. And it's, it was really hard at the beginning, but once we moved on, it started to become easier and easier to a point where last year, or actually yeah, this year, we led a whole school in a competition, and we were able to achieve twice national championship. Not bragging off or anything, just you know, hard with results. So as soon as we moved on, then I realized, I started to raise up a question. Why can things be more practical? Maybe like if something is practical, it's easier to understand, rather than just sitting in your seat, listening to the teacher talk the whole day. Honestly, like when I sit and talk to the teacher, sometimes I actually do fall asleep, but it's not like something that I fall asleep on purpose. It's just because maybe it gets too boring. Now, maybe I'm like one of the top achievers, but still, like, I think education is starting to change. Like, am I I'm going to raise a question for, for all you people. I'm going to ask you guys, what are robots? So you guys could think about it for a few seconds. Most of you, I'm sure, pretty, maybe not all of you, think like piece of metals that you give them something in order to function. Well, let me tell you one thing. You guys are wrong. That, those are not robots. Robots are things that make your life easier. They make your life simple. They make you save time. Now, how do they make these processes? Well, what if robot was implemented in science? Okay, now many of you are thinking, ah, oh, what does that have to do with science? Well, I was in, when we were sitting once in a physics class and we were told, like, we're like, what are robots? Thinking about it. Okay, someone starts suddenly speaking about torque. What is torque? Do I even know what's torque? No, I don't know. They kept on repeating the word. I was just like thinking, what is going on? I went to my friend and I'm like, what is torque? He's like, torque? If length increases, torque increases. I'm like, what did you just say? Come again. He's like, if length increases, torque increases. I'm like, I don't understand. He's like, well, you're dumb. I'm like, no, it's not that. Explain more. He's like, I can't explain. That's the law of physics. Well, when we came to robotics, I was like, what do you go to torque? He's like, look at this piece of metal. If you increase the length, it means it's going to launch at a higher angle. That is torque. So once it became practical, I got to understand it more rather than it not being practical. Now you see students nowadays, once they're sitting in class, they're all like sleepy. But, and then like, this is like one thing showing that how robots and learning and everything is like changing the world. Technology is overtaking everything. This is a class in the 1900s. Look how interested everyone is in the books. Do you think today everyone would look at the books this way? This is another class. Well, all the students are listening to the teacher. Do you think nowadays students will listen to teacher this way? This is a lab where people are working back then where technology did not actually exist. They had lack of materials, but they still have a lab and look how interested everyone is. This is another lab work by a female group of students. Now, this is a class. Everyone's speaking in the class. We experience it nowadays. Why don't we make things practical? Why sit with the old methods? Listen to the teacher talk and talk and explain, <coughs> revise and explain. We're not going to understand. We're not going to get anywhere. Robotics is one way where science could be implemented. Science could be shown. 
Science could be taught to others. Now, maybe robotics has mostly to do with physics, but it has to do with other subjects too, such as chemistry, or maybe like biology, I could say rarely, but like, you know, unless your child is a robot, then that's something else. <laughs> now, this is another class you can see all the students are asleep. We can experience this in our daily lives. Many of you guys even actually could see this. Now, you know, everything in this universe is science. If an apple falls off a tree, you're going to think you're going to be like, an apple fell off a tree, so what, we're going to eat it. No, that's science, it's physics, law of gravity. Well, if a baby is born, that's biology. Yep. Nuclear fusion takes place, that's chemistry. Or astrophysics, I'd say. Now, this is also another lab that, see, as technology advances, you guys can see the old lab, and you can see this lab. You can look at the differences. Now, we said that students are like, you know, when you, like, a student, you can see him when he's on his iPad, he's never sleeping. Even if it's like 3 a.m., he's still willing to continue playing his games. Okay, why not make education that way? Get education something in order to make them enjoy it. Not just sit and think that it's useless. Everyone thinks education is useless, but it's not. It's the key to success. If you make it entertaining for the students, they're going to enjoy it. Now, if robotics is made optional, I don't think anyone's going to participate. They're going to be like, I don't have time for this. But if it's made part of the curriculum, let's say daily 20 minutes, it's going to grab the student's interest. Now, the students, for example, going to choose his career or find a way to university, he doesn't know where to go. His, like, the journey he's going on is foggy. Robotics is one way that's going to make it less foggy. He can see. He can see the clear path. He's going to see whether he's interested in the sciences or he's not. Now, we, I, I'd like to show you like some of the students in our school, which we started like, as you know, programming is becoming the new language of the world. So we started implementing programming in our school. As you can see, this is one of our great students. Uh, don't mind the other one, he's sleeping. This guy is really interested in the programming. You can see he's like typing it with all joy and all happiness. He like, can't wait to move on. So it shows like how interesting it can get, how amazing it can get. It's changing. Everything's changing. The ways are changing. 20th century is gone. We're in the 21st. And we're moving on to the 22nd. Like teaching methods of science should change. It must change. It's a must. If not, then Newton's laws, they're not going to remain. They're going to disappear. We need to save them. Albert Einstein's theories, you think, in another hundred years, will people remember who Albert Einstein was? Well, they might do, but so many of this information might get lost. If you tell someone something, well, I'm going to tell you this. Hi, this is my name. You're going to remember my name for how long? A year, two, five, ten? Well, okay, you're eventually going to forget it. But if you work with something, let's say you have a car. Someone tells you you turn on the car by just putting the key and turning it on. Okay, you sit in the car, there's no key. Technology, there's no key. How are you going to start the car? If you've never tried it before, you will never be able to do it. So you have to work, and we have to make it practical. If it's done practical, then it remains in the student's brain. Well, this is another student. You guys can see he's laughing and he's smiling during this programming course. Uh, uh, uh. Well, now, you guys might wonder why is he laughing. Well, uh, it's programming. He enjoys programming. He's just going to be writing. So, let's move on. Now, the thing that I would like to suggest for all of you, raise up a question. Shouldn't everything be made practical rather than sitting in the class, listening to your physics teacher talk? Well, okay, I know everyone gets bored in the physics class. I don't. Okay, now, you just sit and listen to them, and you're just getting bored. Why not just sit, instead of, for example, him explaining the law of gravity is something that pulls you in the center of the earth? Why shouldn't he come and show it to you? Like, as you stand on the table, jump. Jump. See if you're going to stay up or you're going to... Okay, fine, some people, it might like, sound funny to them, but he's going to understand that it's pulling him to the center. It's something that's going to happen. So he's doing it. If he does it, it's going to stay with him forever. Now, I would like to suggest that everyone, uh, mostly after everyone, whoever is like, interested in the education, raise up a question. Go to your schools. Ask them about sciences. Tell them, why not, like, why don't we change the way we teach science in the school? Why don't, okay, fine. You don't want to change it. You want to keep it the whole way, fine. Decrease the breaks that you give the students. Give them no. 10 minutes, 15 no. minutes every day. Give them, like, a basic knowledge about the new language of the world, program. Or, like, make physics easier for them. Explain it to them. I'm sure many of you right over here, you guys question Newton's laws. You just study it, memorize it as a definition. When you come to the exam, oh, I knew the law, I memorized it, fine, let me go. 
But when you want to understand it or you want to explain it to someone, you don't know. I find joy when like, I understand something and then I want to explain it to someone and he doesn't get it. I like it. Because I'm explaining it to you and you don't get it. It's not that like you're showing him that he's not smart or you're smart. It's just that like, by practical work, you understand it. You're trying to help him. Now, uh, let me say I've been in school for like around 12 years, not 12 actually, 16, uh, two years in nursery, two done, stay in like nursery. <laughs> Fine, but then after nursery, I decided like now I'm graduating in five days. I've seen so many things in life. I've learned so many things. I've learned that science is not something that you need to sit and study or read the book. You're never gonna understand it. You're gonna forget it one day. But if it's practical and it's implemented in real life, you're gonna remember it. Thank you very much.